Hey, and welcome to Bayview Church's online service. My name is Lorna, and I am so glad that you're joining with us today. Over January, we do something called Summer Stories. That's where we hear from different people about how God is moving in their world and in their life and how they are outworking their faith. I hope that uh, this is something that blesses you today and I will catch you at the end of the service.
G'day church. For those of you who don't know me, my name's Mitch and I'm with you today to share a bit of my story uh, over this summer. So I was born into a Christian family, uh, mum, dad and two siblings, and with a reasonably uh, strong heritage of faith and particularly in the churches of Christ. Um, my um, Nan and Pa on my dad's side uh, were involved with um, what has become Monash City Church of Christ. And on my mum's side, um, Grandma was involved in the Preston Church of Christ, which became Northern Community. That heritage and that experience of growing up in a Christian family has been really good for me um, because in addition to being a Christian household, it was also a really good and supportive and loving household. Um, I was always given heaps of space to invent and to create and to explore uh, and always knew that mum and dad loved me, nan and pa loved me, grandma loved me, aunts and uncles. It was, yeah, it was really good, a really blessed uh, experience of growing up. Church and faith has always been a massive part of my life. Um, I attended Ringwood Church of Christ from the day I was born um, until only a couple of years ago. And in that time, I got to be involved in the kids program, the youth program, hang out with the young adults. That involvement and that sense of giving back to the church um, has been really important in the formation of my identity and my experience of faith. It's never been a, um, a static thing for me. It's never been a passive thing for me. Faith has always involved a level of action and activity. Honestly, sometimes probably a bit too much action and activity. Um, I'm someone who likes to be busy. I'm someone who likes to be doing things and I judge my value um, in what I do and what I produce. Um, and I am continuing to learn that uh, God sees a whole lot more than that um, and that it's not the things that I do uh, for God or for people that um, give me value, but these things are a true and important outworking of the work that God has done in me. Which is a very long way to say, I was someone that inherited faith. Um, I was someone who believed in God because that's what you do. I was baptised in uh, mid-high school um, and honestly probably started to make my faith my own a few years after that. Um, the, one of the turning point moments in my life was studying year 12 text and traditions, which I began to engage deeper with the, the Bible as a text um, and started to explore history and theology and um, everything that's gone into making the Bible the book that we have today. That was the time and the space that I started to realise that faith was something that could be poked and prodded and played with and um, it didn't have to, you didn't have to take it on face value. It could stand up to thought, it could stand up to rigour, it could stand up to logic and history and um, all these other disciplines that just brought so much life to my understanding of the text. I fell in love with the Bible in that class and that has never gone away. Following from year 12, I did a year of Bible college in the Year in the Sun program and that was really transformational as well. That was actually where I met Nate, funnily enough, um, and now our paths have brought us back together here at Bayview. Um, that for me was a year of um, drawing out the work that God had been doing in me for the past 18 or so years, but particularly in the last few years of really engaging deeply with the text. Um, and my experience of that year of Bible study, of that year of really intentional uh, exploration of history and faith and um, sociology and the world and everything around it 
was a process of taking the things that I knew to be true or felt to be true or believed about myself, believed about the world and believed about faith and taking them out of me and putting them into the world. During that year, my faith became something that wasn't just for me and my own sense of piety and uh, my personal intimate relationship with God. It was still that, but that had implications for how I lived my life. Recently, I was chatting with um, a few people through my work around the issue of uh, slavery in um, the supply chains of chocolate and cocoa. And I reflected that that was the issue that transformed my faith from being something that was personal to being something that was personal and public alongside each other. One of the places that was also really formational for me was the McRae SUFM Beach Mission, which uh, a lot of the people here at Bayview will have a passing familiarity with, I hope, um, because Cassie and I have had opportunity to share about that here um, in previous years. When I was in late high school, one of the, or the, the team from McRae SUFM came to Ringwood Church and presented and said, hey, this is what we're about. And if anyone would like to join us, uh, you're very welcome to. We would love to have you on the team. Um, the way the director uh, who was there that day tells it is that he was having a cuppa in the foyer after the church service and um, this woman comes up to him, um, who was my mum, and says, see that, that boy? Get him. So my mum proceeded to bully me into joining the SUFM team um, and I'm very grateful that she did because that was a really formative space for me. Over the next 10 years, um, I have learned so much about what it means to be part of a faith community, part of a missional community. Um, I have learned so, so much about kids and about families and the way that uh, we share the gospel um, and the way that we share life with uh, people whose life circumstances are different than ours, the way that we talk to young people, the way that we invite them into full participation in what the church does. Um, one of the things that's been really important to both Cassie and I through the SUFM program has been um, that McRae SUFM is not a holiday program that is run for kids. It's a program that is run for whole families. Our broader vision is for something that whole families participate in together because the whole family is important and the whole family can participate in faith and in church and in community together and you get stronger faith, you get stronger disciples by doing that. It's reflective of my experience um, even though my family and my church probably didn't use a lot of this kind of language or explicitly subscribe to a lot of this philosophy. I think it was, uh, there was this um, sense undergirding everything that families do faith together. So through high school and through Bible college, God gave me a real passion for the Bible, um, a passion for Jesus and a passion for theology and honestly being a huge nerd. Um, through Beach Mission, God gave me a passion for young people and for families and for a sense of community and a community of faith that uh, is, encompasses the whole person, including their relationships with other people. Um, my work currently, I work for Global Mission Partners, which is the international aid and development arm of Churches of Christ in Australia. And I specifically work with the youth and young adults arm in body. Um, I came into the role two years ago um, after working quite closely with that team, um, the Churches of Christ Vic Taz team, who I was, current, who I was working with at the time shared an office space with the GMP team and then one of the Embody staff members stepped away and so there was an opening and so I 
joined the team at Embody and um, did a year as the, um, what was my title again? I was the relationships manager for VicTaz um, and then earlier this year I have stepped into the role of the national coordinator there, which sounds more impressive than it is. Um, our team is currently two people. Um, but it is a really great opportunity to have a lot of really great conversations with people who are in leadership roles, whether they are formal ministry roles, someone who's paid to do work in a church, or whether they're informal ministry roles, people like myself um, for all those years at Ringwood. Um, it's really important to me to be in this kind of space and to be involved in some of these conversations where I have the opportunity to um, focus people's attention on the things that happen outside the walls of their church um, and have the opportunity to make sure that mission and justice and participation in the world at large is a really core part of the discipleship conversations that leaders are having with young people. I think that's really important because I know that it was really important for me. The other thing that I really hope to do with this role at Embody is to create spaces that I would have loved to have been a part of when I was in late high school, early uni. Um, I was lucky enough to have a huge number of really supportive leaders around me who said, Mitch, you love writing. Would you write this thing for our church? Would you?" write a script for our kids production would you write a um, devotion for a camp um, i want to invest in you i want to journey alongside you as you explore what that might look like and that has been so amazing and important for me i want to be that person to as many people as i possibly can and create spaces where people can uh, explore what god is doing in them particularly if they're not able to find spaces in their local church where they can live out particular gifts, particular talents, particular passions. I want to be someone who comes alongside them and says, hey, there's lots of people who sometimes feel like that. I felt like that sometimes, even in the best moments. Come and chat with us, come and be a part of this national network where we can hang out, we can talk justice, we can talk mission, we can stir up a bit of trouble where a bit of trouble's needed. Um, and we can follow Jesus into the margins, into the radical stuff that Jesus uh, puts on all of our hearts. Um, so that sense of mission, that sense of justice has been a consistent through line through all of these things. The justice of everyone's full participation in communities of faith, uh, everyone's voices deserves to be heard. Um, and that's something that Jesus is continuing to point me towards, continuing to challenge me on, um, continuing to encourage me to expand who I listen to and whose voices I seek out. Um, and I am continuing to endeavor to walk with Jesus through that and listen to Jesus, listen to God, listen to the Holy Spirit prompting me. Where can I use my gifts? Where can I use my insight, my experience? Where can I, um, where can I utilize what I've been given for the kingdom of God? And also, how can I dwell in relationship with God? How can I just spend time and relax a bit? Um, that's the harder one for me. But it's been it's been a good journey, and I'm looking forward to it con continuing for many years to come. This is a prayer for the world. Dear Jesus, our world is so in need of peace and hope. We pray that people will be united with the desire to have more compassion, understanding, grace, love and kindness towards each other. You can see all the needs which are more than we can mention. May the change we want to see in the world begin with us. Amen.
Well, thank you again for watching. I really hope that this story has blessed you and given you maybe something to take on and, and think about throughout the week. Uh, if you would like to know more about Bayview Church, then um, head on to our social media pages or um, check out our website. There are connect forms and prayer request forms um, that you can fill in and someone on our team will get back to you and be in contact. Have a great week, be blessed and we'll speak to you soon.